Hey, hey. So here are two different ways that you can shade your hair. First, make a new layer. And then kind of just select in between your colors, which the hair is purple and, well, I mean, the hair is pink and blue. So we're going to get like a purplish color. Anyways, that new layer we made, we're just going to put it on multiply. And now we are just going to quickly go over the hair. We are just going to follow the lines that were already created and we're going to just try to give things a bit more of a three-dimensional look. Take into account your cast shadows, which are shadows that are casted by other objects over it, okay? Um, as you can see, when you draw over the entire thing, the colors are different because we're on a multiply layer. And I think it's important to use the purple color because purple is in between pink and blue. That way, once you do that, you know, you kind of get a color that looks good on everything. Now, I am also just using those lines to just go all the way up and create more details by connecting everything to the, what's that called? An ahoge or something? I don't know, I just had a hard time um, saying that. But yeah. Anyways. So you don't need to make everything go straight to the top and you don't need to connect every single line to the top, but something that I'd prefer. Also, try not to use straight lines. Try to follow the form of your... Just try to follow the form of the object. <laughs> Sorry, my voice is like... <clears throat> my voice is like dying. Okay, so try to follow the form of your object. That way things look more 3D and they just look a lot better. Alright, and I'm also creating something. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm texting at the same time, oh my gosh. Okay, so also creating some shadows in the back to give the character more dimension. Look how much more 3D they look. Aren't they just absolute beautiful? Isn't it just... Mwah! To me, it's gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so now you can see the difference. And wow, it just looks so much better. Okay? Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to alpha lock that layer. That will prevent anything from escaping it. Now I'm just getting a darker purple and then an airbrush, okay? And now I'm just airbrushing on the parts that I personally feel like should be darker. You don't need to do this, but I feel like it helps give things like a lot more dimension, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Of course, I always need to clarify this in videos and stuff, but don't, you don't have to do everything I say because I'm not a professional artist. I mean, no duh, I'm not a professional artist. I mean, I'm doing gotcha. <laughs> I don't think anyone <laughs> that does anything professionally does gotcha. That's not an insult to the community. It's just, you know, <laughs> anyways, you see all the colors. Um, yeah, and then you can make a new layer. You could put it on overlay or add or color dodge. I'm using overlay and I'm getting a nice warm color and I'm just dabbing it on to the front of the face or to places that I feel like need a nice beautiful glow, you know? You ever look at people's art and just think of like, oh, how do they make it like look pop poppy or something? Oh, poppy, that's the name of that disgusting troll. Sorry, not a fan of the trolls movies. <laughs> I'm too cool for that. No, I'm just kidding. I hardly ever watch them. I did secretly want to. On a new layer, it needs to be normal, and um, we're just going to color pick, and then we are going to just, you know, extend the highlights, and we're going to extend them kind of like following the form of each of our chunks of hair, just so that things can look like they have a little bit more dimension and shape, if you know what I mean, right? Okay, so... Um, I kind of just like to do this thing where it kind of just pinches and sort of tapers like sort of in the middle, you know, like I feel like when you have the two wider highlights at either ends, <laughs> sorry, my voice cracks at either end, it gives things a lot more of a three dimensional look. I mean, look at that. That looks so good. Anyways, that's the difference. So now with this one, um, we're creating a new layer and this time what we're going to do is we are going to just select um, the color and I'm just going to kind of just set the colors aside over here on a different layer. You'll see why in a second, it'll all just make complete sense, okay? Yeah, so just selecting all the colors, which is the original colors, um, the transition colors, the back hair, and the highlight. 
transition color isn't really that important, but I felt like it should be, you know, put there. Anyways, you can adjust your bucket settings um, if you want, and on a new layer. Okay, it needs to be a new layer from your original one. Um, I am just going to cover all of the hair, as you see. And, oh look, oh no, it goes over the lines, wow wow. That's why you have to adjust the strength of your bucket, okay? <laughs> why do I sound so condescending? So, and then you just continuously tap, and it makes all of the lines a lot thinner because it expands the area of the bucket, just like one or two pixels at a time, okay? And then we have these weird, like, chunks. So, we're gonna just get dip pen hard, and we are going to just manually go in there and get rid of each of those chunks like that. See, that way everything just looks a lot more natural. Now we have nice, thin line art, and it only took about like three minutes. Whereas if you all did it like just manually, completely by hand, traced it and everything, that might take like even 30 minutes, you know? So now I just see selected a part of the hair and I just got the pink color. And now I'm just using an airbrush and just airbrushing it on where I think it should go. Okay, I purposely did it a bit different from the original. Sorry, I <laughs> my throat is not treating me well right now. Okay, wow, voice cracks. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you can see this technique that I use for shading the hair in literally any of my other hair shading tutorials. Basically, you just take the hair and like you just use a selection tool for each part of the hair and then you just use like um pen fade and then you just brush either side which gives it this really nice shiny look okay um but we're here to just see tips specifically on gradient hair okay you could go to any of my recent tutorials and it will show you the exact technique that i use to shade the hair yeah so anyways, we're going back on top and we're putting the highlights in. I feel like highlights are a really good opportunity to show how round that head is. See, I didn't do straight line across, but I went all around. I think that's very important to do, okay? Anyways, we have an even newer layer now. Oh, you can go down to your base layer again and you could adjust it a bit more if it like, you know, looks wrong or something. So, yeah, you know, you can just continuously adjust things if you feel like it's not yellow enough for you because you have bad taste. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, that is kind of about it, actually. You know, I think it's important just to use your blending layers. Use multiply, use overlay, just use those because they'll affect the colors underneath it without creating as much as a huge difference, okay? Sorry for not uploading much. I want to end my la my lies. I've been lying to you guys. I'm not amazing. I'm absolutely incredible. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, just went over with an overlay layer and just, you know, touch things up. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Sorry for the lack of content. I've been feeling like uh, you like not that great. Anyways, thank you so much everyone for watching, and see so ya. Yeah. Gosh, this is such a cute animation. I'm a great artist.